Well, the Duchess of Sussex's father, Thomas Markles, told this programme he doesn't think the royal family or the British public is racist. He was talking to us after Meghan and Harry's explosive interview with Oprah, where they claimed concerns were raised by a member of the royal fa family about the colour of their unborn baby's skin. Well, joining us now is grad senior columnist Atta Jewell, uh, royal commentator Jenny Bond, broadcaster Nana Akua, and royal commentator and biographer Robert Jobson. Uh, Robert Jobson... And Alex is here as well, of course. Yeah, Robert Jobson, you've uh, covered the royals for a long time. Uh, have you ever seen anything quite like this? No, I think this is the most interview that they've had in the royal family. I think it's even more damaging than the Princess Diana interview to Panorama because of the, the way that the two of them have um, really gone for the institution of the monarchy. They say they respect the Queen, but, um, you know, she's the head of the royal family, she's the head of the crown, and uh, they've disrespected the system. I think that what's really... I've heard what these ministers are saying. It's nothing to do with them, but unfortunately it is to do with them. Mm. You know, the, the issue is the parliament is sovereign. And the reality here, the reality here is, um, you know, Prince Harry, who's rejected the royal family, sticks in line to the throne. One day we could get a situation, it, it might not happen, but if something happened to Prince Charles, Prince William, he would then be called upon to be a regent to a, a young Prince George. Is that acceptable? And if he wasn't good enough, then Prince Andrew would do it. That's not acceptable. I think that really, it's time that we took stock of the situation. Prince uh, Harry and Meghan, they want to be private people. That's fine. Do it. But then they have to not be out of the line of succession, not have the titles, and we can all move on. OK. At a jewel, I mean, the big charge, the incendiary charge, the really damaging charge, is one of racism which mm. Harry and Meghan have levelled at a senior member of the royal family that isn't the Queen or Prince Philip, so it narrows it down. Uh, this could get very nasty, couldn't it, for the royals? Very damaging. Very damaging, but I think post-pandemic, post-Black Lives Matters, this is a time where we are challenging old systems, old structures. I believe Meghan when she says, and Prince Harry when they talk about institutional racism, because I've experienced it. I have been the only black woman, black voice in a room full of um, power, which doesn't look like me. I worked at Vogue House to get into the room, to get into the building. I had an interview with the head of HR. I was asked, um, because you have such a great education, do you feel more white? Um, I have been told by my headmistress at my very privileged, expensive private school, don't bother to apply for Oxford. They don't want your kind. You know what I mean. I've had it all through my life. So when she says this is happening, I believe her because I've lived it. Yeah, that's... Uh... I say, I mean, your, your experiences and, and your voice is so powerful on this. I wonder whether Meghan Markle's description of her experience has allowed people to now speak out about that. It's interesting what her father said. He says he doesn't believe that the royal family or society is racist. He is a, a white man, the father of a, a daughter who is mixed race. But his daughter is saying something very different. And as we hear over and over again, it is the perception and the experience of that which must be I heard. I, I totally agree. I, like Prince Harry and Meghan, I have a mixed family. My husband, you know, he's public school educated. I always joke he looks like a Viking. He's British. We have mixed heritage twins. One of my daughters is very light in skin tone with blue eyes, the other is darker. We are walking social experiment of what 21st century racism looks like. He has seen it through my eyes. We live very different world in, in very different worlds, different parallel worlds. He gets five hugs a day verbally, I get five slaps a day. I work I walk into a shop with my darker skinned daughter, the walkie-talkies uh, kick off. I'm followed by security. My husband goes to a shop with my blue-eyed daughter and they are given free gifts and chocolates and, and uh, discounts in, sh in shops. And unless you walk in my shoes, you don't know what I'm talking about. Mm. And that's OK. But okay. if 10 people um, stay front, lie down. OK. Uh, Nana Akua, uh, you have a slightly different perspective on this, don't you? Well, I mean, look, my perspective is this. First of all, what was the context of that question with regard to the colour of the child's skin? I myself have faced racism, so I support Meghan if people are being racist, because that's just not acceptable on any level. But I think we need to be very clear about the context here. I, my, I have um, two mixed-race children. My son is called Ivory, and I was we were all laughing and talking. What if he comes out really dark? I mean, people make comments. It doesn't necessarily mean they're racist. It could be based on a lack of understanding and ignorance 
ignorance. But I, I, I do feel that if there is any level of actual racism, then yes, that should be investigated. But it's not good enough to say, oh, we're not going to tell you who it is or what they said. If you're going to bring it to the forefront, then who are they? What did they say? What was the context? Yeah, I agree. And I think it also applies to Meghan's other explosive claim that she was feeling suicidal and went to a senior member of the royal household and was told she could not mm. get help or treatment uh, because it would be a bad look. I mean, Jenny Bond, it doesn't get more incendiary than these two charges, does it? No, no, the palace is clearly in a lot of trouble here and we are going to have to have an explanation. The mental health one, I just don't get at all. Why would anyone say that? And watching Meghan Markle last night, I must say that seeing the whole programme, I did feel a lot of sympathy for her. It was a woman in, in a great deal of distress. Um, but I'm sure that the Queen is also in equal amount of distress and we hear that there was a statement ready to go last night, but she asked for it to be paused. I think she was correct in that. She needs to make a very measured and a very full response. Perhaps she wanted to see the programme for herself. And if she did, that might have changed her view. It did slightly change mine, I must say. Alex, um, you, I'm sure, were listening to Thomas Markle's interview um, and his judgment on his own daughter's uh, claims about the royal family. What was your reaction to that? I, I found, found it quite hard to, you know, um, to hear him say that he, you know, could categorically say that the royal family wasn't racist and he didn't believe that, you know, this had happened. Uh, you know, I think it is a possibility. And I think the fact that, you know, the Queen has perhaps delayed her response, it shows that the royal family are thinking extremely carefully about their next move because the next move is so important. Mm -hmm. It's going to be massively judged. We know how the ripple effect has really you know, uh, affected people, you know, in the studio, uh, you know, and across the nation. It's the only thing that anyone is ever talking about. And I fully understand that, you know, we can, and there is a way to talk about, you know, uh, how a child may look if it's going to be mm. mixed race. However, language is everything. Context is everything. Mm. And I don't think that we should be so quick to just pull apart Meghan Markle's claims and also Prince Harry because we know that actually it was said to him and the fact that he said that it was an awkward conversation perhaps shows that it was someone that was very close to him, someone that he didn't expect to hear that from but actually doesn't want to expose and you can understand his dilemma in... Yeah, he, except he's let off the bomb but he, he's targeting the whole lot of them at the moment. Uh, and that seems to me incredibly unfair Yeah, and, and 99% of the royals who didn't say anything. In a and, and I do think that, you know, they should reveal who said what. Because right now, we're all left with 101 questions. And like I said earlier, looking at the entire royal family, wondering who said it. Yeah. But like I said before as well, it takes a lot to speak out. It takes a lot of courage and perhaps they wanted to go some of the way, but not all of the way. You can, have, you can have an institution that harbours some racists and you can have a country that harbours racists without the institution being racist or the country being racist, right? Alex, I mean, it's, it's not a zero-sum game here. What worries me about this interview is that America in particular is now raging with this concept that Britain and the royal family are racist entities. I understand right. that, and I'm not surprised that the Americans have, have taken that view. They've always been very strong on racism. They perhaps confront it a lot more than we do. Their conversations are a lot more frank, and I'm not surprised that they've sided, you know, with Meghan Markle on this and, and also Prince Harry. Uh, like I said, I do feel that in order to move forward, someone needs to step forward from the royal family mm -hmm. and perhaps take a step back, because, you know, as you say as well, if this is true, and if it was a senior royal, if it is someone that's to be king, how can we respect them? How well, to me, we the context is key, because if this was said, and it was said innocently, that's one thing. If it was someone literally, uh, as, as Nana said earlier, if it just innocently asked a question, that is one thing. If it was said with any derogatory tone or concern or worry about the skin colour of the baby, that is out-and-out -out racism and it's completely unacceptable. The Although, problem for the palace is morning, it appears to be somebody who may be a future king yeah, but it, that Harry is targeting here with this. As we've heard this morning, it is about their experience of what they heard as well. It isn't, it isn't just yeah. what was said. It, it was, it was it's how not Harry just. It's not just about it. what was said, it, it's how it was received. All right, Robert Jobs, really the final important. word to you. You want to come in? What, 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 it could 
future king. This is like a death by a thousand cuts. Prince Harry has turned around and said this, this happened, and we have to believe him. There has to be, they have to come forward now, give the content. They have to do that immediately, because other you have a serious problem going forward with people blaming, blaming um, people that they don't even know that they said it. At the moment, the whole company of Blamed with this, everybody right. in the room. Okay, we we lost the. We We're lost just the losing uh, losing contact there, but we, we we get the point, and it's an important point. I think the palace has to take this seriously. They are taking it seriously, and we'll see what happens. It's going to be certainly fascinating to see how they handle this incredibly damaging charge.